my God, are we ready to nerd out tonight or what? Welcome, intrepid adventurers, <laughs> to episode 27 Too of late. Lawfully Chaotic. <laughs> Sorry, Sharon. Too late. <laughs> Oh, we're already rolling down the hill, aren't we? Yeah, we are. I, no, I got sorry. a lot to say tonight. Hello and welcome to episode 27 of Lawfully Chaotic Studios. We're going to talk tonight about the D&D movie, Honor Among Thieves. Yes. Wow. We're going to watch the trailer shortly and all give our opinions. And I foresee some heated discussions. Oh, definitely. Yes. Um, definitely. Um, before we do that, um, thank you for joining us. For those of you that are already here, um, and for those of, your, of you who are not, I could pretty much say anything I want about you because you ain't here yet. Because <laughs> you ain't here. <laughs> <laughs> um, any announcements? Uh, Sharon, you got any announcements for us? You know what? No, I do not, other than the fact I got a fancy new mic, and I saw this really, really cool uh, video on YouTube have you guys ever heard of the game? Yes. Yeah, I have heard of that. Yeah, it's a D&D &D game that's been going on for 40 years. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, that might be another good subject for the next. Ooh, Boom, I've been wanting to talk about that Join for us. A long Thank time. you for joining us. Join us yeah. next week when we talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 40 it's, year it's... long campaign, and you can actually find them on Instagram. It's very yeah. interesting. Yeah, very it is. big terrains, and I don't know how he keeps track of everything. Yeah, there was an article uh, about him uh, in, it was a news article, I forgot on what channel. We'll find that out. I think that is actually a good topic for next week. Um, cool, and congrats on the new mic. You sound great. Yay! Jason, any uh, announcement? Um, uh, just a couple interesting things. Uh, Grain Lands will be back this Saturday. Uh, we took last weekend off because we went down to Geeks and Teas in L.A., and my Saturday game that's been online for almost 50 sessions now got to play our 49th session together live at Geek and Tea. So that nice. was a lot of fun. Yay. A little special almost four-hour session that we had. What is a 49th session? Is that uh, emerald or, or tin or uh, rusted copper or something? I think it's just sleepy old man. That's really okay. what it turns out to be. <laughs> um, <laughs> 50, is, 50 is what? Diamond anniversary? <laughs> But yeah, I've I officially signed on my 45th player. Nice. My pay to play. So all nine of my tables are now full. Sweet. Uh, yeah. And I'm currently working on my 10th pay to play table over at the D&D &D club. So if awesome. you're interested and you want to come play, head on over there. So cool. Then, that's all I got. That's all I got. What okay. You, well, what do you got with that, on? with that, uh, let's jump right. Well, you know what? Let's shoot the you shit. Do you have any for... announcements, Brian? We've all got a turn. I think we need to talk about a couple things first. Number one. Hold on. Uh, I'm trying to think. Of, wait. I'm trying to think if I have any announcements. Oh, well, that's fair. Hello and I want, greetings, I want everybody, chat and listeners. I, I want everybody to just watch me think. <laughs> no, I have no like announcements. You can hear anything. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> you can't hear the, the gears. Can't hear the, the you gears can't, you can't hear the You can't hear the hamsters. So you're fine. <laughs> um, oh, well, you're fancy. You get live hamsters. <laughs> no, they're they're dead. Oh no. Um, I okay. Think, uh, well, I think what I'd like to do is have us chat about media, the previous attempts at D and D, and what our hopes were individually. And then at the halfway point, let's watch it together. I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna say we're gonna naturally get into discussion about it. So no, 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 I think no, we spend a gonna, couple we're of gonna minutes. Practice discipline, Brian. We're no, there practice is no discipline. discipline. Dear and, listener, uh, the pot has already been stirred. Exactly. Yeah. So how about not? Ha let's do a few, let's do a few minutes or so, ten minutes or so. Not let's not wait till halfway because. That way we'll get some chat in here. I got a lot of shit to say about this trailer. So. Of course you do. Um, There's going to be a good this... cop, bad, uh, bad cop situation. For... Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Um, and this way we, we can uh, we can maybe get a few people in the chat um, uh, to, to uh, chat with us. Okay. Yeah, so it's always, getting pursuant... started, it's always a little bit sluggish. Yeah. So, yeah. so pursuant to that. Okay. So we can also watch the trailer a couple times during the show. That's fair. Ooh. Burn it into um, our brains. Let's do it. <laughs> Enigma <laughs> Forge. Look, nice. Showed. That's awesome. Um, his, uh, he actually plays on my Discord. His game has taken a slight hiatus as his work life has gotten a little bit busy. Nice. So hopefully well, welcome, Enigma. Thank back. you for joining us. Um, 
So in, in that case, should we watch it now and then talk about you know the lead in stuff that you want no, to and then watch I, it again? I want to go down memory trail for a moment for sharing's okay. sake because I right. think the last time we got a D&D movie was the year 2000, like an official licensed yes. D&D movie. It's been yes. 22 years. Um and no one remembers it because it sucked balls. Well, what's really funny is <laughs> after I was heard. doing research all week, I ended up watching that movie twice. I'm sorry. Um, Jeff, what's up? Thank you for joining us. I'm sure I, you have a lot to say about this topic. I <laughs> I have mixed emotions. Um, about not comparing wait, we're talking we're trailer. talking about the we're talking about the 2000. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So going back and watching it this that movie has <laughs> the potential of becoming the Rocky Horror cult classic that I think it could come into depending on how it's curated in the future so that year 2000 movie i i have a mixed bag on for a whole slew of reasons but after watching it a couple times this week and looking it through the aspect of where i've matured up to this point and looking back on it with very different lenses i have different i have different opinions on it now i used to hate it i thought it was miserable going back and looking at it Knowing how hard I know it is now to play the game, I wonder about all the things we didn't know that was going on because we were 22 years younger. You know what I mean? Like, like there's licensing, there's screenwriting, there's Hollywood, there's all these things we don't know about. We only all Wait, we ever have. Let me get my tiny violin for no, Hollywood no. because it's so hard to make a movie. You know what? I actually never got to see the original D and D movie in the two thousands. I've actually it's, never heard of it until I looked up uh, the new D and D movie. And that okay, and and that speaks volumes right there for somebody who well, has immersed as a new player for somebody who has immersed herself so deeply into the game to have never heard of that movie because as players and fans we have shut it out of our brains because it was so shitty. Nah, I don't know <laughs> if I believe that, but I I think as a generational game, each generation can consumes the media based on the influence of the media. Most mm -hmm. most younger generations consume Twitch, YouTube and whatever alternate platform other than mainstream cable. So they're going to, they're going to, they're going to view things in a different perspective. Um, <laughs> I think the 2000 D and D movie came out during a time. Um, well, and, you know, and it was, <laughs> it was pretty bad. It was, I mean, it was pretty bad in the sense that it was actually a poorly done movie, which to me kind of. Enigma makes it good right there. Enigma. Monty Python is is way fucking more D and D than that D and D movie was. And but they were intentional with their direction. I think with the D and D yeah. movie, I think that they were trying to aim for something, but totally missed the mark. Hundred percent. But it also talks to another aspect of the whole D and D movie genre, right? Mm -hmm. Which is all the other movies that were D and D esque. Right. Yeah. So you oh, yeah. had the, yeah, yeah. the idea of a traditional, like, uh, cultural D and D movie that was made with the intention of doing D and D, mm -hmm. but then you had all these really unique attempts at D and D esque movie. And when I went through the week, kind of reviewing a bunch of stuff, I went back to my one of my favorite D and D movies in the world, The Gamers. Conan. The Gamers. No, The Gamers. If you ever want to watch a pure D and D movie that'll have you laughing from beginning to end, mm -hmm. and it was done on a twenty dollar budget, the gamers, it's amazing. Okay, I need it's to, an, I need it, to it's watch an that amazing movie, and you'll enjoy so, it. Let me throw this out there. I do. Um, yes, I agree with Jeff. Best D and D ish movie is Conan for me. Too low fantasy, but a good shot. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's, uh, there's D, there's Conan, there's Excalibur, there's Beastmaster, there's um, Monty Python. Oh, Beastmaster was a horrible movie, and I loved it. Right? It was a horrible movie, and I loved it. Okay, and and there's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> Jared, there's gonna be a lot of caveats. There's gonna be a lot of caveats. <laughs> what? 
I said I've never seen it. So I'm just gonna be like, yeah. There's a I lot, mean. there's gonna be a lot of caveats to what I say tonight. And mm -hmm. I may seemingly contradict myself, but you will. not really. Um, Mark Singer was awesome. Um uh and and uh and and Flan, we we know that you can't stand role playing. <laughs> That's now known. <laughs> <laughs> um, but hey, that's cool because there are a lot of different styles of play. Now, all those movies that we've that we've mentioned so far are like really campy, kind of, for lack of a better word, shitty eighties movies, or you know, right? It's and they have that feel about them. Now, it may not be fair to make the same assessment of the two thousand D and D movie because it hadn't hasn't had enough time to age, age and become yeah. a cult classic. Yeah. However, it has been 22 years. So I'm going to say, yeah, it has. Okay. And the difference is uh, paradox. We are staying on topic today, believe it or not. <laughs> um, I think, I think that the, I find that the esque movies, the ish movies, do a way better job. And I don't buy the, if I may, okay, respectfully, Jason, I don't mm. buy the uh, notion of it's really hard to make a D and D movie because of licensing. Willow, that's another one. Thank you, Jeff. Um, you know, because of licensing and all that stuff. If that is is a, a hurdle, then you haven't drawn up the right contracts with whatever studio you're doing and you shouldn't be doing the mm. movie in the first place in my opinion okay so if you're gonna before, call a movie dnd &D, yeah. you need to do it well that justice. you just answered the overall question is which is if you call it dungeons and dragons then that becomes a different topic like yes. sharon you've seen game of thrones yeah i you've think seen honestly, lord of the rings yeah lord of the rings was like my first sort of like really D D ish movie and to be quite honest I kind of expected this Dungeons and Dragons movie to be kind of like that, but now why? Uh, why so? Why would you expect it to be like that from your perspective? I think it's my taste in in fantasy. <laughs> Lady Hawk, lawfully chaotic. Hey, <laughs> um, I don't know. I just like the Lord of the Rings, and it's high fantasy, and like it's very serious, and it has like romance in it. And I think the way that they're presenting this Dungeons and Dragons movie. It's kind of like another Marvel movie, but I guess it's more easier for people to consume the show, the game, right? The movie, because if it's high That's fantasy and it's talking about you know, uh, you know, displacer beasts and you know, gelatinous cubes, people are just going to be like, "What? What are you guys throwing at me?" <laughs> And that and that is a very uh, oh that's yeah absolutely Princess Bride. Mm -hmm. um, all of these movies, and to your point, Jason, you know if they're not if they don't have D and D in the title, then all of these movies contribute to just the feel of what we feel when we played the game and when we do play the game, and that sometimes can be, in my opinion way way more powerful than just calling a movie D, &D and doing a half-assed shit job on it a la the 2000 movie so we're at the 15 minute mark let's watch the trailer well go ahead share before we start go ahead oh no i'll save my comments for after the premiere okay so let me get us set up here we're gonna watch the trailer and we're gonna talk about it afterwards um, we'll watch brian hate on it but the rest of us will talk about it so here we go <laughs> is it that obvious already <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, but it probably will be soon. <laughs> Let me reset it. No talking. Down no in front. Talking. Down in front. Here's the thing. We're a team of thieves. Then when you do this, you're bound to make enemies. Sometimes those enemies come looking for revenge. Truth be told, we helped the wrong person steal the wrong thing. We 
didn't mean to unleash the greatest evil the world has ever known. We're going to fix it. Well, how do we pull that off? Uh, Figure it out over a drink? Probably best. You need cooling! Then give us a fighting chance. We're going to need strength. You got this, right? I know you don't. We also need courage. Back to school. Magic. And you. What is that again? It's an owl there. Let's go! Be warned. There is evil here. I'm glad he's on our side. Wanna hold on to This one's dangerous. But whatever happens. We'll be ready. What is it exactly that you bring to this? I'm a planner. I make plans. You've already made the plan, so... If the existing plan fails, I make a new plan. So you make plans that fail? No. He also plays the loot. Not relevant. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> hey, Brian, how, how, how you doing? I absolutely you love want, it. You want me to start? <laughs> well, I mean, if you want to... I will say, and I, and I hope I'm wrong. Now, again, caveats, because I always like to cover my bases, you know? Mm. So when I run for president in 10 years, nobody comes back and says, remember that one time you said that thing about the D&D movie? Fuck you. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. I do not have good hopes for this movie at all. At all. Would you like to know why? Nah, it just sounds like bitter generational tears. No, it's not. No, yeah, it's let me not. let me lick the screen. See how not, salty they are. Not at all. It's not generational <laughs> at all. Please do tell Brian. To me, overall, <laughs> and and like... and there's a whole bunch of things I want to pick apart. But to me, yeah. okay. So let me start by saying the owl bear thing. I actually have zero problem with that. <laughs> that doesn't bother me in the slightest. And yet you have so much hate for druids. I'm so surprised. Well, just because druids suck and they ruin the fucking hey, game. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you get them, Sharon. Get but them. let me quash the owl bear thing right now. So, okay, well, it's a little deeper than that. But pursuant to the topic of if you call it D&D, &D, it should be D&D. &D. It should reflect the rules. It should reflect, uh, you know, the, the mythology and all that. Otherwise, there's no reason you're just, you're just, uh, slapping, see, boom, second right there. Druids break campaigns. Conversation done. Uh, <laughs> what was that meant to be broken? Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. So you're calling a movie D and D. So yes, it should definitely reflect the game itself, which I think this does. Okay, the 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 game, the rules, the system. From what I see, it does reflect that. The owl bear thing. That is just a bunch of butthurt people. <laughs> Rules lawyering, okay? Nobody wants to see a fucking druid on the big screen turn into a dog or a fucking raven, okay? Oh, it's a <laughs> druid as a fucking dog. No, I get it. An owlbear. It's fucking awesome. That's rules lawyering, <laughs> and I think that takes this to a, a ridiculous degree. So all of that owlbear anger... Believe it or not, like I said, that is the one thing that I have no problem with at all. Okay. Yeah, but now you just immediately launched into something you're cool with, which automatically goes against the idea of D&D &D immersion. Well, hold on what a second. Wait, 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 wait. Why? I'm just saying, because according to Dungeons & Dragons, they can't do that. What do you mean they can't do that? I'm not I'm serious. I'm there. You can interpret the rules however you want to it's there for a reason and also there is such a thing as rule the rule of cool okay and that's like, exactly what they did right there dms do you, that all the time free, we've talked free about to it to interpret rules boom that's how... right there seriously that it's not that's not saying like oh a druid just transformed into a dragon or a ship it's like 
you know, you're literally picking apart the word beast as uh, in, mm -hmm. in, as abomination. And like I said, on the big screen, I do get it to a point. Nobody wants to see somebody turn into a fucking dog. Okay. <laughs> it's boring. All right. Now, overall, that's the only good thing I have to say about this movie, because overall, I got to say just the vibe that I get, it looks to me like studio boardroom driven drivel. Like Marvel theme. -esque. No, I think Marvel is is been a fucking masterpiece. And it's because they gave creative control to people who who truly live and breathe that universe and that's why it's so good mm -hmm. i don't see that here the director uh, the directors they do not have a um a and i actually looked them up believe it or not sharon i did my research this time <laughs> they do oh, not nice. have they do not have a very um uh broad background of these types of movies and in fact mm -hmm. dare i say they're portfolio of movies is pretty much in my opinion again just my opinion mostly meh other than spider-man homecoming which i thought was fantastic oh yeah okay so again just now i have a big problem and, and stop me when you guys want to say something because i i'm gonna no sharon's <laughs> gonna going okay, after <laughs> yeah sharon's gonna go after you but okay um <laughs> Talk, I, I have a problem with D and D. Okay, in Marvel, the campiness works, the game, the Guardians of the Galaxy works, especially for that group. It's just masterful, right? It's beautiful, the comedy and whatnot. You can still do that in a way. If you look at the Avengers movies, there's a lot of of, of intelligent humor quips in the avengers movies but yet it still has a much more serious tone than guardians of the galaxy we're still talking about a superhero movie all right but there's a lot of feeling that you know that can be had from those movies i do not think and this maybe this is just me as a generational player but i don't think so i'm trying to look at this you know with an open mind um i don't think that Modern campiness mixes with D and D. I I just think they they clash, and I think there are different ways to emulate the fun that we have while playing without succumbing to the Hollywood tropes of let's blow shit up, let's have you know uh, uh, quippy little sayings and taglines. I hated The Witcher, and I've told you this, Jason, because I couldn't get past the vernacular. It was like modern day vernacular in a very, you know, fantasy setting. And it just it didn't work for me. And I, I see this going right down that road and with all the effects and all this stuff. I mean, Sharon, you know, one of your favorite you said this is one of your favorite scenes. Uh whoops, hang on. The black screen. That's my favorite. The scene. black screen. Yeah. Let me. Uh... <laughs> there we go. Yes. This is this is directly out of fucking Ragnarok down to the goddamn Led Zeppelin track. Yeah. I mean, come on. Come on. This is that scene from Ragnarok with different song, but same with Led Zeppelin. And the trailer opens to Led Zeppelin and it's it's driving mm -hmm. into it's the recycled. same it's recycled and it's driving into the same place for me mentally, which is this is a, a summer studio blockbuster type film. Okay. Box office intent in the guise of a D and D movie. And I just, I, I don't have, you know, that's, that's basically my, my problem with it. There's a lot of little stuff too that I can pick pick up but I'll, I'll pause for a bit to let you guys jump in on it but so i like i said i i hope i'm wrong but i i don't have good <laughs> i don't have good uh, a good outlook for this one bit so you don't see any longevity for the movie either again like, this is based on a trailer years. okay this is based yes. on a trailer all right i'm i hope i go see the movie and i'm like i was completely fucking wrong this was awesome I do think that it probably has some longevity only because it is introducing some rules. Although we have to see again, are they just flashy effects 
or do they are they part of the story? Um, but I, I don't know, man. I, I see this. What is a D and D movie to you? Like when you think of going and enjoying and absorbing a Dungeons and Dragons movie, what is playing on your sense of why you're going to see it? I'm stoked to see it because honestly, D and D is all theater of the mind, and it would be interesting to kind of finally see it on the screen. And they're actually being hi, Fatal. Um, they have. They're trying to be true to the game. I think there's probably an on-site DM for for the movie, probably, I'm sure. <laughs> um, like they've had like nine spells listed in there. There's like three dragons, three different types, and there's like a, a lich wizard, then the mimic, and the displacer beast. Like, I haven't even encountered those things in the campaigns, and yet I've heard so much about it, you know? So it's really exciting to me to see that. But like I mentioned before, I sort of kind of expected like a Lord of the Rings sort of vibe, but that's just because I just love Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm a little bit biased towards it. And I think I mean, that, and I think you exemplify a particular challenge that any D and D movie is going to have. Mm -hmm. There's already been a thousand people that have been given the opportunity of doing it better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are now in a comparative position and not in a speculative position. We're that's... not really speculating it's going to be good or bad. We're comparing it to everything we already know. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem well, that this I... movie faces is that oh, we're comparing I, I it to I, I you're I'm comparing it to Marvel. You're comparing it to Marvel. No, you... no, no, no. I'm well, saying that 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 campiness works for Marvel in my opinion. I'm actually looking at this in a vacuum. I just think pursuant to me and my, you know, my belief of what D and D should feel like from the trailer, this doesn't feel like that. I'm not comparing it. So I, and I think it's, a, uh, it's also a good point. Go ahead, Cher. Actually, you know, now that you say that, Brian, I, I like, I sort of didn't like it at first, but then I sort of thought about it and I think it sort of, honestly captures D, D in a sense because D, D is sort of like serious fantasy but then there's also some funny quirky parts and it's kind of laid back at the same time so mm -hmm. in a way this movie is or at least the trailer is sort of capturing that because even in like that favorite scene that i have with the paladin jumping towards the dragon like that's a yolo move in D, &D. like you know mm -hmm. your bard friend is gonna get swallowed by this red dragon Hey, the paladin's just gonna go for it <laughs> and hope for the best. Okay, that's the one comparison that I'm making, Jason. That's fair. In in and yeah. of itself, that scene's awesome. The fact that it's exactly recycled from Ragnarok. But, but I but I think what what sometimes we lose focus of is that the way individuals decide to consume entertainment. Um, to be honest with you, I could watch Chris Pine pick his ass for two hours and be perfectly happy. <laughs> I uh, love he, Chris he, Pine. He, he's such an influence on me over the way he saved the Star Trek universe. Yeah. Um, and the way he's been involved with that, um, that for me, a lot of the influences of a movie have more to do with the people and the attempts that they make at it and less to do with the studio structure. Um, anything done in Ragnarok fashion, I will consume like poisonous Skittles um, because I love Ragnarok. It's Ragnarok to me bad. was the best... <laughs> It's my, it's my favorite that ever movie. came out. It's and, my favorite Marvel movie. And I feel like the retro Guardians, retro Thor, and I'm hoping they're going for a semi-retro approach with d and I'm hoping they do mm -hmm. because I'm going to enjoy that even more. Um, because I am a product of demographics, I don't care about studios. I don't care about budgets. I don't care about what they screenwriters and whatever they do because i understand how all, hard all that is from one of my previous corporate jobs i know the precise detail and what it takes to actually make a film so i don't care about any of that it doesn't interest me <laughs> what interests me is just having a good time okay and i can have a good time watching a piece of shit as long as i'm with friends while doing it sure i can have a good time watching chris pine 
and Rodriguez pick each other's asses talking about rolling natural what is it with you and I don't know. Asses? I, well, it's it's a you know old men. All we do is stand around and watch monkeys groom themselves. So it's just a reference. But I recognize the fact that I'm no longer in that marketing demographic. And I will say this is a marketed film. It's a genius mm. drop of a trailer. Absolute social genius drop of a trailer. Um, they purposely duplicated scenes and inlaid scenes from reverse angles. And they chopped up the timing so much you never can really draw conclusions from anything they're doing. Oh, yeah. which It's and, a and brilliant that, marketing ploy. Yeah, and I and, love and, it for that. And, and I'm hoping that that is, you know, there are some movies that are summed up in a trailer very easily. And there are some where you're like, wow, that's completely not what I expected, even though I watched the trailer 12 times. I'm kind of hoping that's where this one is going. Um, I feel I, you know, in regard to Chris Pine, I love Chris Pine also. To me, again, I kind of feel like that's another mistake. you got a huge big name actor. Why, why not? Use no names and give them a chance, you know, to uh, at their well, big break right and let and let the movie be the star instead of the star being the star of a movie that is but called. I think this. what you stated earlier is a little accurate. I think they're using some baked in processes. Number one, it was filmed during COVID. Um, number That's two, true. I think they have a process for you put one or two anchors in there and then you introduce new young people to a new demographic of marketing that makes sense to the way they're trying to push the, the idea of the cultural sense of the game, because we've all watched them gradually. Um, yeah, exactly. They've, they've all, we've watched D and D make a content shift over the cat course of the last two years. We've mm -hmm. watched low high fantasy shift to multiverse, um, you know, planar fantasy, right? We're now, in levels of imagination that high and low fantasy just can't really support. And we're now preaching the gospel of the multiverse. And I think this movie is a great way of kind of saying, okay, this is how the game used to be played. And somewhere in there is going to be, this is how the game is played now. And I, and, and I think that's going to be a narrative within the movie. Um, I think for people like me who enjoy uh, consuming the people who act and do what they do and like the whole retro approach, they're going to enjoy it. I think for folks who are like Sharon, who have a comparative analysis in their own mind, like I love Lord of the Rings, I love Game of Thrones, or I love this and I love this, and uh, I wonder what's going to be like when I come come to see it. Um, and then, yeah, I do enjoy consuming people. <laughs> yeah, I do this. Um, He's a witch. And then you Burn know, him. <laughs> then you you know you you've got Brian's more kind of eclectic approach to why do I feel like I'm watching the same thing over and over and over again because the studios are just out to make money, you know, and, well, and yeah. I get, I get that. Go ahead, chair. Yeah. And I think it's, I think the main ploy for this movie is to get people to go and consume D and D. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the hook. That's the hook oh, yeah. line and sinker for that. And there's going to be way more people interested in the game now because of this movie, because it has some of the uh, plots and scenes that people are already familiar with. I'm actually kind of interested um, if they're going to go with this kind of direction, if they're going to make a cinematic universe for D&D. Because &D. Mm -hmm. there's a lot of content for D&D, &D, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if they go down that route. No, that's what very you interesting. What, that's very interesting, and I actually agree with you. I will concede that um, as, a, as a continued means to garner these new audiences into the game that, that we've never experienced before up until you know the past few years, mm. I think it's, it's a brilliant tool for that. I do think because it's not sitting around watching you know, a bunch of rules basically on the big screen, um, that it will do a very good job of bringing those people in. So I, I concede that point totally. Um, in terms of a of a, a uh, like an MCU type thing um, for D and D, I would love to see that. I mean, to your point, there is just there is no end to. I mean, you can come out with a thousand movies and still have a thousand more to write. I don't see that happening with this vibe. I think to do something like that. Hmm. You can come out with a bunch of D&D &D movies, but to do a proper MCU type, you know, woven thread, 
I don't see this vibe being able to um, facilitate that. Yeah, I would agree with that, but I also hope to Sharon's point mm. she's right because so do I. You know, because it would make it would make a fun universe to say the least. It would make a really fun universe. Um, yeah, like the the well, and I think we've got some examples we can modern examples we can pull from. Um, yeah, I think like, the the success of Critical Role and their transference mm -hmm. of fifteen hundred hours of game mm -hmm. into a animated series. Yeah. So now, good. yeah, right? Vincent's, I mean, Vincent's point about I I kind of agree. I th I, I don't. Now nah, you know what I'm not going to go there. Go ahead. I was just gonna, <laughs> no, I was going to no, comment no. on animated versus live action. I think live action can absolutely work. I feel I kind of agree with Vince. I think this genre better is suited towards animation. But if done right, like I think if done if right, done, yeah, I think if Titmouse were to really take it on and find somebody to really yeah. back the production of it, I yes. think it would be an amazing Netflix series. And I think they missed the boat. Totally. I and agree. they either missed the boat because they couldn't afford the licensing or, you know, they couldn't, um, they couldn't quite put the right team together and draw off their successes of the dragon mm -hmm. prince, Castlevania, yeah. Um, and the and 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 foster a much healthier relationship with a production studio like Titmouse. Titmouse mm -hmm. is by far since um Secret of Nim um came out so many you know decades ago. Oh yeah. Um uh, Don Blue Studios. We haven't had um much animation that will would that would really feel like you're going through a cultural shift. And Don Bluth who not only did Secret of Nim, but he did all the anima uh, animation for Dragon's Lair. Mm -hmm. And then we just kind of existed for a while on the attempted through rotoscope and and, yeah. and different methods that people were trying to use. And I think D&D's window was captured a couple times there, but never really kind of done well. Mm -hmm. But now mm -hmm. you look at things like Love, Death, Robots and what Vox Machina did. Oh my Machina God, I did, love that. Right? And you look at the idea of the anthology concept yeah. and then the quality of Vox Machina's yes. animation. Yep. Can you imagine what an amazing production value we'd have yeah. to your buddy's point episodes as modules? Yeah, totally. How, 100%. how fun that would be. Agree you know? with everything and, that you said. And and once again, I, I feel like Sharon's right in the hopeful aspect. Like this may stir some interesting creativity um, um opinions or options i mean just from a you know I'll, I'll throw batman the animated series in there just as a you know the original you, one right the, the original one like, yeah yeah i mean you can do animated that is just gritty and and really true to life feeling you know um i, I agree well, with everything but share how did you emotionally feel watching vox machia on on prime like what were what was your brain telling you because you had a relationship with with the game already through mm -hmm. the critical role youtube experience and twitch experience that was going on when you watch that what what was what was going on hell yeah <laughs> that's what i was <laughs> that's, that was my feeling for it you and know they blew, they blew away the kickstarter record right oh you yeah know that right yeah, yeah they, uh, mystery science theater had the previous record and then yep. they came in and well it. yeah i trounced yeah. it yeah and I I was super stoked. I'm still super stoked. I'm still somehow hoping that there's more seasons involved. But if there's not, then you know what? You know what? Cool. I am happy with it. Like the fact that they were even to put it to screen was just really awesome. And I get to relive those campaign moments, you know? And like, what if they do like for campaign two, campaign three? They yeah. have all of that. I, 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 my oh favorite my is campaign two. I would love to see that animated. Agree. Yeah. I think, um, did you guys think, ever go ahead? Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, you did go you, ahead. did you, did you guys ever see, uh, this piece of yes. steaming garbage? <gasps> How dare you talk about Keith Ledger like uh, that? Knight's Tale. Yes. I've seen that multiple times. Once again, because I love him as an actor. So I don't care about the movie. I consume movies very uniquely than most people do, I think. Yeah, but you say you don't care. I mean, it was garbage because you're telling a fantasy story and it's like a bunch of fucking skater dudes. 
I know. You know, awesome. like, oh, let's jump on this horse, grab your lance, and kick this guy's butt, bro. It's like, it, it, it spoke it's such a to fucking my, disconnect. Yeah, but it spoke to my Generation X appeal. It spoke to the days that I used to hang out with my friends like that, and we used to play D and D. And we, yeah, I, there's a reason why he's not on the I'm West coming Coast. there. I'm um, gonna fuck up Hollywood, man. A very D and D movie that's not fantasy at all is, you know, Lords of Dogtown. I mean. It's an amazing movie about the. Um, <laughs> it's an amazing. A Night's movie, Tale was garbage, you know. Vince. I'll fight you on that. <laughs> but I, yeah. I, the reason why I like Night's Tale, and then I'm going to let Sharon go. The main reason I like Night's Tale is because it spoke to me. I enjoyed most of the actors that were in there, and that's what I watched it for was them. Mm -hmm. The story didn't really matter that much to me because I was having fun consuming it the way that makes me feel like I'm being entertained. So I wasn't worried about all the noise and all the artifacts and all about the silly kind of line dancing that they did at the end of the movie. It was just a fun trip. Dude, this has nothing to do with D&D, &D, but have you watched The Bear? No, that looks On like uh, that looks like two-year-old drivel. Oh, dude. Doesn't appeal to me at all. Okay. Conversation's <laughs> done. Thank you for joining us tonight on uh, on our last episode of Lovely Cam Studios. <laughs> See, oh, Chad, oh look at him. that. See, Vince right there. So fuck you, Jason. <laughs> I mostly did that for, for Vince. <laughs> no, I there's do a like Chica the bear because there's a the Chicago, bear, there's a Chicago once, show. Once again, the bear is a great hero's journey story. Yeah. Right. We all love the hero's journey story. And I, and I think that plays <laughs> into it. Go ahead, Cher. You were going to say something. Well, no, wasn't there a show that had, um, What's what's she has red hair, green eyes. She was part of Geek and Sundry. Um, oh, uh, not not Felicia Day. Yes, yes, Felicia yeah. Day. She was in a show that was like it kind of had like yes, the guild. Yeah, that was like nerdy mm -hmm. sort of D and D vibes to it. And I freaking oh, love that show. Yeah, it's a great show. I loved it too. I haven't. I loved seen it when I, they I rebooted it because it was fun watching them all age. Mm -hmm. You know, and they rebooted it and they came back for another series of the guild. They still do stuff on Twitch together. They still play together. Still let me watch them play. Yeah, they still play. Let me ask you this. Hmm. Both of you. Hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it fair to say <laughs> that one of the, the funnerest parts of D&D &D is making is... up words like funnerest? Exactly. And okay. making characters, right? What am I going to be? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Eh. Jason, Whatever. you're just disappointing the shit out of me. <laughs> eh. I'm the forever what's with DM. The, what the fuck? What's do I with care the about character characters? choices in this movie? Uh, well, mostly pursuant to races. Well, first of all, the druid is she notes. is she a, a tiefling, point. or is she like a satyr? Or yeah, something? she's a tiefling. No, she's a tiefling. She's, she's a, a tiefling. tiefling. Okay, she's a tiefling, she's a tiefling that looks nothing like a fucking tiefling. Looks like somebody trying to cosplay a tiefling. Well, with hold on a second. Hold on a second, because I even heard that uh, for tieflings, like for older modules, they weren't very outspoken in their infernal legacy, so they tried to be more human-like in form. So maybe that's what in she's form. Doing. But may okay, if you're going there, they that's one thing that they have to deal with is that legacy that they have to overcome. But again, pursuant mm -hmm. to you're making my point from earlier, pursuant to wanting to see D and D the D and D aspect. Why would you pick a party of five people that all look 98% human? It's fucking stupid. True. Where's the dwarves? Where's the elves? Where's a tiefling that looks like a tiefling? I mean that there's probably going to be dwarves later in the movie. <laughs> I didn't see one what, dwarf what D &D or elf without a dwarf. <laughs> right? It wouldn't be a very short movie. I didn't see one dwarf or elf or a tiefling that, that looks like fun? a tiefling in that trailer. So that's another issue that I have. You specifically even put one in and you made them look totally human. So first of all, the black dragon, I think, is not a traditional black dragon. The first I, one at the opening scene? Yeah, I, I think it's one of the new um, either gemstone or um, stone dragons. I think it's actually... Not yeah, spitting acid. I think stone. it's spitting shale. I think it might actually be, um, yeah. Some gully dwarves would be great. I would love some gully, gully dwarves. 
um, from Dragonlance. So I don't think that Black Dragon is the traditional Black Dragon. I also don't think that Lava Dragon is a traditional dragon. I think they're introducing some new concepts on some of kind of like traditional concepts at the same time. Now, sometimes hmm. it's a trap for a movie to try to to try to speak to too many generational influences. Like, you know, sometimes the, you know, things get lost. Now, is the basic plot perhaps purposely tropey? We stole something from someone and they're pissed off. I could I could read you 182 modules that are written that way. So, I mean, do they, but did they do but that on tropey, purpose? But they're not. They're tropey, oh. but with the but with the main characters, they completely avoided all the tropes. I want to fucking see a, a devil looking tiefling, or I want to see a, a dwarf, you know, they'll with a shitty head. Eventually, attitude. they'll probably eventually like introduce that because I think. You know, because D&D, &D, like, at the very beginning was about, you know, Satanism or whatever. So what if they were to roll out with a fucking red tiefling on screen? I think people would steep, be like, hey, there is a devil in D&D, &D, you know? Like, nah, I'm going to disagree <laughs> with that. Look at look at Stranger <laughs> Things. I, I think that's perfect considering the okay. short attention. I guess this is, just, like, an now. easy way for people to jump into D&D. &D. Just, like, take a little itty-bitty bites, well, you know? okay, and you're right. And that begs the question... And Jason has kind of touched on that. That begs the question, is this movie made for D&D &D fans or is this movie made to bring new people into the game? Because I do not think that you can satisfy both. And I'll throw out an example, okay? If this movie sucks, it's not going to affect my paradigm of D&D, of &D, okay? This is in a vacuum. If it's a shitty movie, whatever, fuck it. I don't have to watch it. I can still enjoy the game. I grew up on Star Wars. That was our entire life as a kid, okay? Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. I remember seeing Star Wars the first time in the theater when it came out. Used to sit on my driveway with my friends. We'd ride our bikes to the corner convenience store and buy Star Wars trading cards and sit on the driveway and trade trading cards the rest of the day. When they re-release, when they started, you know, the re-release of Star Wars movies with episodes the one prequels. two and three yeah the prequels right? <laughs> any fucking star wars fan on the planet will tell you that those movies are utter fucking garbage and the reason is is because they did those to try to reach the next generation which mm -hmm. in my opinion was a mistake because they should be catering to the diehard fans who are now parents who will then bring their kids into <laughs> that into that organically and 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 garner that next generation <laughs> i love <Okay>? you Vince. <laughs> once we get to once we get to again true fans who have been given the keys uh to to the new uh star wars universe a la mandalorian and uh rogue one and han solo and and all of the netflix stuff you know, now we're back to the point where the fans freaking love it, and it still taught and it still speaks to a new audience. Okay. Now, when the prequels came out, that rocked my world because I was like, "Oh my god, this has ruined Star Wars for me." Because Star Wars is, was such a big part of my life. But my point ahead, is, sure. my point is again, and then I'll shut up. Yeah. Oh, no. I don't think this movie. I don't think okay. you well, can appeal to, to both kind of audience. dovetail for everyone's mentions. Um, I think when Jason mentioned about the, uh, I think you said weapons or maybe I just popped it in my head, but since this is a movie that's introducing a new audience and maybe they're going to be introducing new weapons or new items as well. And maybe just maybe what if they make like a new D and D campaign out of this movie to like further kind of pave the way for new players to play. I, well, yeah, I mean, that would be a great idea from a marketing standpoint. I mean, standpoint. The, the movie feels like a box set to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm perfectly fine with that. And um, if that if that is the <laughs> purpose, then I, I can't argue with that. For me personally, it's probably not going to appeal to me very much. Probably not. I don't think it's going to touch enough of your hopes that you want it to be because there's no such movie like that that exists. Um, those movies come mm -hmm. across by accident. 
those movies happen by accident. I mean, the yes. originals, you know, the original Star Wars was an accidental film. It was never mm -hmm. meant to be made. Oh, yeah. You know, it was a pure accident. Um, I don't know if you've ever watched a Fellini film. No. When you watch a film for its artistic intent mm -hmm. versus the material or story intent versus the studio project feel that a movie has. Mm -hmm. um, I think the one thing we all have to exercise as good stewards of our own money is that once you pay that ticket price, the only opinion that matters is your very own, not the other ones. Mm -hmm. And And I think when you start watching movies and you have too much fandom anchored to something, you're already disappointing yourself before you've watched it. And that's not a, a dig on you, Brian. That's a very common thing. I, I don't disagree I, with that. You know, that I see through all kind of ways that things are consumed. Like I'm a huge Orville fan. I think Orville was the star was the Star Trek we've been looking for for years. And then Star Trek Strange Worlds came out that feels like Orville. Mm -hmm. You know, so suddenly people are beginning to listen, you know, but it's and it is do it is doable. I mean, look at the Lord of the Rings franchise and look at the Marvel franchise. It is it it is doable. You know, it is perfectly um, possible to put out a franchise of movies based, you know, cemented so strongly in a in a fandom base and but, still be fucking awesome. But I wanted to go back to Sharon's point when she brought up the guild. And then um, it's also possible to fuck it up, like basically almost everything DC fair. has. <laughs> but when Sharon brought up the guild, I hadn't thought about the guild for a while. I thought about gamers for a while because gamers was really fun to watch. Um, to a point. The one, thi the one yeah. thing that the guild um, um, does for me is it does the same thing that Critical Role did well, which is they took two wa ways of consuming a popular thing and could appeal to two different groups distinctly, mm -hmm. you know, so you had their live role, you know, they had their, you had their live D and D play with their whole kind of like world that they built with that, but they were so reticent of how important it was to transfer that into something else that was going to appeal to people very differently. And once again, it's a generational difference. You have, Mm -hmm. A very kind of stodgy studio framework sitting out there that likes making money. But then you have yeah. this new kind of younger generational fan base that's growing alongside very unique ways that they're consuming this new stuff. And so you get into these points of conflict and differences. And, you know, sometimes some generations aren't willing to let the other generations either fail or succeed. But Critical Role has proven without a doubt that that generation is capable of doing so much more than we give that generation credit for. And that's part of Sharon's generation. And I think as these generations kind of migrate to the apex of control, we're going to see a lot more uh, entertaining uh, uh, cultural related stuff. That's going to be better. And I think D and D movie coming out and I think it's actually going to do well because I think it's going to appeal to the right audiences. It's going to, probably describe that we are now in the height of the golden era of D&D &D, mm -hmm. and we have no place now but to go flatter yeah. down and that's just a natural cadence that culture goes through that pop culture goes through yeah and, and it'll I... it'll it'll bell curve down for a while and it will get mm -hmm. rebooted and become something else later but i think this movie takes into account a lot of what got us here takes into account the Watsy corporate mentality in conflict with a Paramount studio mentality. We're seeing that play out and we're seeing that this is probably the last real big thing you'll see during the golden era. You'll see more critical role animation. You'll see other people attempt animated series. I think, I think we're saying goodbye to the old way of things being done. Yeah. And I think the new way is going to gradually take over. Yeah, and I think and this I don't, is just one of those kind of little hiccups in the road that's proving that that point well, is going to continue. I mean, it's, you know, to be fair, this could be a hiccup for me. Will it be a hiccup for the game in general? I don't no. think so. I agree. I think mm -hmm. it's going to do well. What I can see happening, uh, and let me make a point, first of all. I have no, I'm not, I'm not unwilling to give up my generational ownership of this game. 
Okay. <laughs> Quite the contrary. All right. I mean, I love Critical Role. I've you know what you can't do when you're dead, Brian? You can't play D and D. You're right. Um, <laughs> but I love I love Critical Role. I've done a lot of work for Critical Role. So you know, I am completely open to the next generation taking this way further than we ever did. This particular trailer, just that aside, this particular trailer just gives me the vibe of this is boardroom driven creativity. I've been dealing with that my entire career as a designer. Okay. So I, I just want to be clear that I'm separating the two. This is not, yeah. oh, this is not how I think DD should be. This is, I just think this is just flat out going to be but a shittily made movie. But I think well, both, sh go ahead, Chair. Well, I'm curious, what, what do you think? Would, what things would you change to make it more appealing to you? I think you can still get the excitement. I think you can still get the action. I think you can still get the uh, the humor. I just think it needs to be dialed back just enough so that the feel of D and D as a game takes precedence. Okay, I think I think uh, <laughs> and change the tiefling red. <laughs> yes, I would yeah. make the tiefling red, and then the movie's perfect. Um, I, I just again, and and this is all pursuant on watching a two minute trailer. You know, I'm gonna. The nice thing about this is we have another episode coming up after we see the movie. Oh right? yeah. Well, we'll probably so, do another episode when they drop another trailer. I mean, the movie doesn't oh, come yeah. out. Till oh, like yeah, 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 yeah. We got a couple more. And in, in typical fashion. But something else that you, you know. said that I do want to touch on hmm. is even if the me's of the D&D &D world hate this movie, okay, I think that it could very well be just that, you know, that open door to introduce people that still have not yet played the game, don't know what the game is, and get them into it. I would hope that if this is the the gateway <laughs> drug into a cinematic uh, universe of D and D, um, that the that maybe afterwards this that Hollywood would would say you know what maybe we could do a lot with this that is entertaining yet deeper, a la what's going on in Marvel and and really do it right and here's uh, an interesting mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh your buddy had posted a link to the um kotaku.com site and i'm going to read that which has that and they said and that basically and that basically sums up what i'm saying it's you're it's it's two different genres and it just it doesn't mix for me that's fair um i think I think this the short well I'm gonna do a quick um kind of like a we might go over today so because I really I want to get Sharon's opinion on this yeah. little story I'm gonna yeah. tell because I no offense your opinion's already kind of kind of I I know what it's gonna be so I'm okay with it that's fine um but I running as many tables as I do I get the privilege of experiencing a lot of different ways people try to play and I'm privileged enough that they trust me not to interfere with what they try to do. That the affirmation of the game is the emotional, the, the, the emotional fun that people are having because they feel safe enough to try to fail and to try to succeed at the same time. I have a player in my Wednesday night game who only made it as far as second edition. Um, and now he's, you know, a, a member at our table um, and we're, you know, we're playing the adventures of Nicodronus and we're taking on the cult of the chain of oblivion. And it's going to be mostly a dungeon crawl with some city activity later on. And watching him play for the first time last night was probably one of the most emotional experiences I've ever had because at the end of the sessions, I always take five minutes to talk about the session and get the feel from everyone on, on how it went, how everyone felt about it. And it was an incredible moment for me. It was an incredible moment for me because I no longer view the game as something that has to be owned by a generation. That matters virtually zero to me. We are privileged enough to be a part of something that has now encompassed so many generations of play that there's virtually not a single comparable game out there 
that can stand up on that same kind of legacy of, you know, my grandfather's father's brother's nephew played or niece or grandmother or aunt or uncle, right? There's just 10 years goes by, 10 years goes by, 10 years goes by. The only thing unique about this current generation is the access to so many different ways to consume something that wasn't able to be consumed other than one single way, you know? And I Mm -hmm. think we're watching that play out. I like the fact that it looks like Marvel because I think that's going to help a lot. Um, I'm in the business of, of earning a living through the D and D, you know, the D and D brand. Um, so I know that movie's going to help with that. I know that movie's so all this is is a personal greedy money grab for you. I get it. Eh, Not necessarily (laughs) greedy. I'm totally (laughs) joking, dude. (laughs) Go ahead, share. I'm joking. I think to me, this is like a grand opening for everybody, just like kicking open the doors and just saying, Yeah, come on, guys, come check it out. Great, just come on. Or even better yet, what you just said, share, come check out what you've been missing. Yeah. You know how hard it is for people to find games? I mean, we did a whole episode about it. You know, it's hard. And this amazing, glossy movie that takes a very Marvel-esque approach with a kind of over-the-top budget with probably a little too much corporate involvement. And they've got some pretty decent actors and actresses together, although I don't like to differ between the two. They got good actors together. um, And... I think we're going to see something unique come out of this. I think the parts that are going to be bad are the ones that the corp touched. And the really good shit is going to be the ones that they didn't touch. And something's going to come out of that. I I, I, I feel like that was the lesson that was learned from Star Wars. Um, I feel like they're learning that lesson with Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of lessons to be learned with Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. The way they treated the Red Witch in that movie, I couldn't even finish the movie. It was a so lot bad. of a lot of people had a problem. The with her, way her they treated her character, yeah, the actress, the narrative of the all-consuming 1950s out of control mother was awful, and they're gonna learn a valuable lesson from it. Um, I think Rogue One also to- taught Star Wars a valuable lesson. So there's going to be two things out of this movie. They're either going to learn well, from it or it's going to be another 20 years that we wait. But you know what the main difference is, though, is that people can actually jump in in the adventure. Mm. You can't jump into Star Wars. You can't mm-hmm. jump into no, Lord of the can't. Rings. Yeah. yeah. You, can, you can live and breathe this adventure and... And that's why I like your original <laughs> comparison with being a gateway. Like, here's the door. Look at what yeah. you've been missing. Why aren't yeah. you playing this game? This this, this imagery representation we're giving you is just a microcosm of an entire amazing culture you could be a part of, as well as yeah. play a most amazing game that you could be a part of. So I yeah. agree with I, you. I do think, I think, and I hope that, to your point, Jace, um, that this will be a learning experience. And I, I kind of see this as like a test bed for for the studios to kind of realize like, okay, we, there is money to be made. Mm. And now there's a deeper level um, of content that can be had um, in a much more thoughtful uh, way for sure. Well, so, and, and I would say as an example to that, um, if you go into the YouTube sphere and avoid the comments and avoid all the toxicity that is the YouTube comment robot space, and you do a search for anything D D movie related, type at the end of it, fandom. Mm-hmm. There are some really cool fandom pieces out there. Oh, I'm where sure. They've taken actual D D movies, either that went straight to DVD or whatever, and they've redone them. And I'm sure that they're way better than that. Right? So <laughs> and that's the other thing I love about this. Is that it's like People yeah. are so willing to accept what they get, but then use their own creativity, which is to the very na- nature of the game, to okay. spin it into something uh, that's fun. Let me throw this out there. Um, unless somebody has uh, anything else, um, kind of major points to make. Well, 
Do you? Starting with number five yeah. of my 29 points. No, I was going to ask. I just want to take an hour let's... to talk to you. <laughs> let's, let's end this on a, on a, a positive <laughs> note. And I'm speaking should they or should they not reboot? And I'm, the I'm barbarian. No. Um, well, actually, no. That's another. <laughs> that's a whole other. Uh, what is? Let's all say what we are. What is our favorite part of the trailer? Like, are the most exciting glimpse okay. of something that we're most excited for? You go first, Brian. Then Sharon second. No, I got to think about it for a second. <laughs> uh, he's got to think about it for ten gotta... minutes. Share. What was your favorite part? Well, you all know that my favorite part was when the paladin was jumping towards the red dragon as it's being ch chomping the, the bard. But also another cool part is uh, when one of the cultists was using Misty Step to avoid, um, I think it was, what was that it? That was pretty it cool was... to see that spell have some action. Ray of Frost right? from yeah. the Sorcerer. Yeah, yeah, that really yeah. Cool. yeah I, I was like, that's Misty Step, I don't know. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the... uh, well, I will it... say... That I got that that also I that actually stands out for me too is the misty step spell. Yeah. Um but otherwise I actually I love the owl bear. I think all the rules lawyers I, can fuck off personally because I, again <laughs> I want to see a druid if a druid is going to wild shape I don't want to see him wild shape into a bird that's been done. I think the owl bear is pretty cool. There were so many nostalgic moments for me in the entire trailer that it's hard for me to find one that sticks out. Um I think they did a pretty decent job of giving someone like me a glimpse at what the Red Wizards of Thay might have looked like. Mm -hmm. I thought that was yeah. kind of fun. It may yeah. not be Terrell. It may not be that world. I don't know. But it was fun to think that it was possible. Uh, the this is, this beast, is Baldur's Gate, right? Or is it Waterdeep? I think it's I Baldur's Gate. No it's Waterdeep. Uh, it, it's... I have the no mimic idea. was really awesome. Yeah, the, the mimic was beast. awesome. And the reason why I love the Displacer Beast and the mimic so much is I liked what they did with the Displacer Beast with that quintessential go at the camera because you'll never see that in the film. It won't be mm -hmm. in the film. It's designed for a trailer. So yeah. you won't actually see that. The mimic was amazing because for the longest time, I've always had to describe to my players, well, a mimic uses its tongue to move. And they're like, well, how would a mimic do that? Well, now you've got video to prove that's what they fucking yeah. do. They use their yeah. fucking tongue to move to 20 <laughs> feet. Because how could a, you know, how could a chest with a tongue in it move? You know, so I thought that was really fun. And, you know, let's face it, the most famous line in any D&D &D game. Let's go talk about what we're going to do over drinks. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how we all meet in the tavern. Have that you, is, yeah. Have you, have you guys ever seen a mimic with busted teeth? Oh my god, that's <laughs> fucking awesome. That's awesome. Come over I here so I could bite you. <laughs> little <snaggle> tooth. Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. I actually don't I haven't read enough of, of the movie to know where the, the setting is. I've only watched the trailer. I've I know no... it's all I know is it's Forgotten Realms. And it, and it's it looks like it's on the coast, so I'm gonna guess that's either Waterdeep or Baldur's Gate. That's My guess would be Waterdeep. that if you're about to release... I think it's Baldur's Gate because the river runs through the center of town. Yeah, so cool I would guess that, guys too. Are able to point that out. So cool. I, I was hoping that... Nerds! It, yeah, I know. We are nerds. I was <laughs> hoping that it was just going to be an like a, 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 a... If it does turn out to be the Sword Coast and it does turn out to be Baldur's Gate, then perhaps this is also the gateway to us finally getting a Forgotten Realms reboot, like a codified one. Mm -hmm. We haven't gotten that yet. We haven't actually yeah. gotten a traditional Faerun reboot at the yeah. level of the world of Tyrell and, and all the different continents that are involved with it. Um, it's always been, you know, they did that one book with Sword Coast. You know, they, they their modules kind of touch on areas, but nothing's been codified into like a single universe of here's the campaign. So to Sharon's point earlier maybe if this is forgotten realms maybe this is the new universe that they're skipping into like Could maybe be. this is where they're finally saying all right forgotten realms is multi-generational mm -hmm. and there's a lot of of pc love and there's a lot of youtube love for it and there's a lot of kind of like creative space love for it um that maybe this is finally that reboot and the gateway into a 
whole new line of books and modules and multiverse related stuff. And we're going to see a whole reboot to the legendary status of, you know, the Faerun. And suddenly we have this new thing. Um, I, and I'm okay with that. I've always loved Forgotten Realms. And if it turns out that's what it's located in, I'm going to love it all the better. All right. That was a cool summation. Sharon, you and I will do one now. What's your What's your overall summation of this? Of, well, I think it's pretty exciting. And like I've stated before, I think this is just, you know, opening the doors for everybody and just telling everyone to come in and grab a drink and tell a story and to feel it and live it. But also to just invite a whole new slew of players to jump into D D and share that excitement with old players you know that's really cool i mean sure there's probably going to be some instances of the rule of cool in the movie but you know that's D D in itself too and i i think that there is a lot of potential for the dungeons and dragons movie and to just open it up to a cinematic universe like i would totally love to see a dritz um the story being told on screen i think that would totally. be really cool talk about lighting <laughs> fires of the zealots yeah. nice yeah. i've met well, i've, I've met, met miss mr salvatore um and he's he's an interesting and fun person to talk to so nice yeah. um well my my take overall is that regardless uh of oh and by the way share your new microphone's amazing thank you for doing yes. that um, regardless of what <laughs> I think of the movie, I think it's a great thing that it's coming out. I, mm -hmm. I agree, Sharon. Yeah. It's going to get more people into it. Whether it's good or bad, it's going to get people talking. Hopefully, if it's bad, it just doesn't become bad and put us into a hibernation for another 20 years, but rather, okay, let's do this right. right. Um, I, I do think that there is going to be entertainment value out of it for sure. Um, so yeah, even though I, I, at this time, uh, am very pessimistic about it, I, I'm also extremely excited and I do think it's a really good thing and I hope it's fucking awesome. And that next time I can come on the show after we see it and say, yeah, I was hundred percent wrong. So you, since we all like, did yeah, summations, <laughs> no need to roll tonight, but let's just roll to see what we would have gotten. Well, no, we still need to close out. We still need to do rollies do to close out. All yeah, right. of course. Yeah. All right, I'm still using the same die, although I won last Ooh, time. Ooh, I got a 17. Oh, baby. 19, brother. Effer. 19. Ugh. We're all rolling high tonight. I got a 15 off of my dream. You're up, Brad. Close Woo! this out. Okay. Well, um, thank you all uh, for joining us. Thank you for hanging out. This was a really, really awesome discussion. I'm looking forward to when the second trailer drops, we'll have another discussion. Um, thank you, Sharon, for putting together our notes tonight. Fantastic. As always, um, it really gets us thinking. Appreciate that. Yes, um, thank everybody for joining us in the chat. It was a really good chat tonight. And um, Sharon, where can we find you? Hey you guys, thank you all for joining us for another episode of Lawfully Chaotic. You can catch me over on Instagram at BarryBot, and you could also I'll show I'll show <laughs> you could also catch me on Twitch at the DD Club on Saturdays for uh, the Greenlands campaign from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Pacific time. I play as Mira, a druid, Galastar Druid, Circle of the Moon. Maybe I'll turn into an owlbear. Mm. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Jace, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me over at TTRPG Academy on Instagram, uh, Twitter, YouTube, Discord. Go check me out on the LinkedIn uh, tree um, over on my Twitch channel. It has all my socials. Um, my life's gotten busy. It's going to get a little busier. Um, but uh, I, mean, I, I, if you would have told me I'd be playing D and D for a living thirty years ago, I would have told you you're a mad person, right? Pretty crazy, and isn't that fantastic? Yeah. And my, I'm really enjoying my Mad Mage group. They're turning out to be a pretty fun group. Awesome. So. Awesome. Uh, and as always, you can find me on Linktree, uh, RPG and Co. Uh, probably the best place to get me is Instagram. Forgot for a second there. Uh, same RPG and Co. .com. Uh, thank you for joining us. Be kind. Play games. See y'all. Bye. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>